Hello, lovely internet strangers. Welcome to the next installment of the 8th Squares Corner. I didn't want to make a super elaborate video about this. I just wanted to speak off the cuff about this article I saw about a report that came out recently. So the article title was, Adult women are now the largest demographic in gaming. It's time to flush your stereotypes down the drain. Feminism, girls! OMG! Congratulations, gamer girls. You're officially at the top of the food chain when it comes to games. They say that women over 18 made up a whopping 36% of the gaming population following followed by adult men at 35%, and teenage boys who are often stereotyped as the biggest gamers now lag far behind their older female counterparts, making up just 17% of the gaming demographic. They say that there's expansion across the board, more people are playing more games of various genres across more platforms, with social games on mobile and casual games on PCs emerging as huge leaders. Last year saw a significant boom in women over 50. Their numbers jumped by a whopping 32% between 2012 and 2013. Okay, so as I was looking at this article, I realized that although the article date says March 1st, 2020. The data that they're referencing is from a report from 2014, even though there's a new report from 2020. But they said that this study was recently released, so I was like, it must be the 2021. But the data that they're referencing is from 2014, because they're talking about games from 2012 and 2013, and an increase from 2012 to 2013. So most people would not notice any of this, because they don't pay that much attention. Most people wouldn't even get past the headline, they would just see it and see that it confirms what they want to believe, hashtag feminism. But they would confirm that the date says March 1st, 2020, and think that this is recent information, but it's not. So I have the most recent information, and we can compare it to the report that they're talking about. It's hard to compare it exactly because the age breakdown that they did in 2014 is different from the way that they split it in 2020. Something really annoying about the 2020 report is that in 2014, you can see in the report in small print. The data comes from them surveying 2,200 nationally representative households and speaking to the heads of the household as well as the most frequent gamer in the household. In the 2020 report, I have no idea where this data comes from. So I have no idea if they had the exact same sample size as in 2014, if they surveyed the same families in 2014 to see if things had changed over time for those specific families, or if they picked totally random new families. No information on their methodology. So it's hard to even compare their own data to their own data. But regardless, so in 2014, players aged 36 plus was 39%. In 2020, it was 41%. So not a big change there. The biggest change was in the under 18 year group, which dropped from 29% to 21%. And in 2020, they did 18 to 34, not 18 to 35. But the 18 to 34 group in 2020 was 38% versus 32% for the 18 to 35 group in 2014. So that's where the switch happened. Game playing went up in the 18 to 34, 35 demographic and dropped in the under 18 demographic. So this is not just like a gendered thing. This happened across the board in those age groups. So that's an interesting thing to ask. Why did the percentage drop in the under 18 group? I'm not going to do a detailed breakdown like I would if I was doing a planned video. So I'm just going to highlight some of the things that are interesting or relevant from my perspective. One is that 61% of people in the adult demographic are gaming on their smartphones, which is no surprise to me at all. And the most popular game genre genres in general are casual games. Casual games explain the general expansion of game playing because more and more companies try and make these games that are accessible, that you don't have to be a hardcore gamer to get into so they can get more money from people. Games that parents want to play with their kids. So they show you some statistics on the men aged 18 to 34 versus the women aged 18 to 34. And the differences, in my opinion, are staggering, which is to say that for the male group, 75% play video games on a console. And for women, 77% play video games on a smartphone, which is not surprising to me at all. So this whole feminist message to the article about move over guys, gaming is a woman's world now. More women are gaming on their smartphones. They're not gaming on consoles at the same rate as guys. So people mean when they say most gamers are men, they're still usually referring to the hardcore gaming. That is games that require a lot of practice and skill, reaction times, hand-eye coordination, etc etc. that are not required from playing something like Animal Crossing. And I say that as someone who played OG Animal Crossing, so don't be getting mad at me. There's nothing wrong with playing Animal Crossing, but don't pretend that playing Animal Crossing makes you a hardcore gamer. For men, 51% most often play action games, and for women, 46% most often play casual games. Again, no surprise to me, and there's no problem with that. I think it's great that there's a variety of games that appeal to a wide variety of people, and everyone can find something that they can enjoy. There's obviously been a demonstrated demand 
demand in the market for casual games. This entire report is just crap because they break down the genres of favorite games for men and women and they include example games and I have no idea if those were actual games named by the people that they surveyed or if they just came up with examples of those kinds of games. But in the female group, they said 52% had action games as their favorite games and parentheses, Grand Theft Auto, Super Mario Odyssey, and God of War. If you know anything about video games, you know that those three games could not be more different. Just because you like playing Grand Theft Auto does not mean you'll enjoy playing Super Mario Odyssey and vice versa, or just because you like playing Super Mario Odyssey does not mean you will enjoy or be good at playing God of War. All those games are great, but they're just very different. So to lump them all in together as examples of the kinds of action games that women like playing is just totally stupid in my opinion. When I talk about the kinds of games people play, they don't break down into family games, action games, etc. To me, it's what are the mechanics of the game? Is this a game that involves a lot of shooting? Because that involves marksmanship. Yeah, games will have some kind of like auto aim, help, whatever, but you still need to have that marksmanship skill. Most shooting games will require you to be moving and aiming down the sights at the same time, to be aware of a lot of different potential enemies in your environment, to think quickly on your feet when you get ambushed. Shooting games are either inherently multiplayer or if you're playing single player, you're playing against computer enemies that pop up randomly and are not entirely predictable. Puzzle games usually involve you working by yourself. There's no ticking clock. You can take your time, unless we're talking about a competitive puzzle game like Tetris, and that's a different story. RPGs involve you being able to figure out the appropriate strategy to level up your character, what moves to use in battles. My mom can play Tetris and she's really amazing at it, but if she tried to play Children of Morta with me and my husband, which is a roguelike dungeon crawler, where I'm like shooting off arrows while moving and using this like stun move to keep enemies off me and raining down arrows on another section of enemies and looking for opportunities to find health in the environment, my mother would just see all that chaos and her brain would just shut down. People like to play games based on what their cognitive profile is, based on what their cognitive skills are, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I've had so many female friends who, if they did not grow up playing those kinds of games, when in college they would try to play a game like Left 4 Dead, they couldn't do it. Like I had a friend who could not figure out how to walk. Like she would walk down the hallway like this. And then instead of, you know, turning to walk down the hallway, she would just like shuffle sideways because she couldn't coordinate the two sticks to help her walk. She also couldn't figure out vertical alignment. So she would either be looking completely up to the ceiling and trying to smack zombies up there or be looking completely down at the ground and trying to smack zombies down there. I was trained on those games at a young age as well as a variety of different kinds of games. I played GoldenEye Perfect Dark as a child, puzzle games like Tetris. I played dungeon-based games like Zelda Ocarina of Time, racing games, games based around mini games, RPGs. I played it all. But if you don't expose girls to certain kinds of games when they're really young, I feel like they're at a disadvantage because their spatial reasoning and reaction times are not naturally at the level that men are on group average. The main thing that struck me from the article talking about the report was why are women like constantly seeking validation about this topic? Like they can't just go out there and live their lives and play games the way that they want to. There's always like some person writing an article about, see, like, girls are on top now, you know? We're gamers and the evidence proves it. Like, who cares? Just go play your fucking games. You're still not playing the same kinds of games as men on average. Some of you are, but not on a group average. And that's fine. Everyone just go live their best life and play the games that makes them happy. Why do we need to write articles about this BS? I'm sorry, but the only interesting statistic here was the fact that there's been an increase in video game playing from the older demographic and a decrease in in gaming from the younger demographic. This could be because more parents are playing with their kids, I don't know. Anyway, just gonna leave it there. That was just a ramble about the stupidity of reports and how people try to use statistics and how they try to use really old statistics in a new article and pretend like it's new information and think nobody's gonna notice, ignoring the fact that there's actually new information to talk about because people like to take reports and statistics and be like, OMG, look at this thing, this proves my point. And it's like, no, it 
doesn't really. I was a psych major in addition to being an English major, so I always go to the source, even though the 2020 report did not even indicate what its sources were, what its methodology was. But it has amazing infographics, which I didn't bother to show in this video because that's all that matters. Shiny, shiny infographics. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, suggestions, etc., please leave them below. Message me, email me. If you liked this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe and I will have more content for you very soon.